Let us bow before our Creator, whose spirit moves over desert and sea, whose word has the power to create, to judge, and to save. Come, let us worship God. Please remain standing for the opening hymn, Rise, Shine, You People. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. You may be seated. Please join me for the opening prayer. Gracious God, when our spirits lift at the beauty of the day, you are Lord. And when chaos threatens to overwhelm and we dread the next news cycle, still you are Lord. Always you are creating, redeeming, sustaining. 
Speak then your mercy into this place until we discover the courage to open our eyes, unclench our hands, and move toward our neighbor in need until all the world rises and moves with the rhythm of your grace. For we long to honor the name of Jesus, by whose breath we pray. Amen. And if the kids want to come forward and handle change for change, we'll do that now. If there's anybody else that wants to join us for children's time, you can do that now. Okay, so I got a question for you. I'm going to pick on these Schmidt kids up here. Okay. I'm going to say that you guys went to Dollar General, okay? And we're going to pretend like your mom left Jackson there. Okay, what do you think would happen? Would she say, oh, I got these two other kids, I'm fine. We're just going to leave him there forever. No? She says she might, I hear that. Okay, so what do you think she would do, Jackson? Would she come back looking for you? Probably, right? And she might be a little mad because maybe you ran away from her. But mostly, she would be so happy to have found you again, right? Right? So kind of what we're going to hear today is we're going to hear a story about a shepherd, okay? And he had 100 sheep. That's a lot of sheep, isn't it? Yeah, he lost one. And you know what he did? He went looking for that sheep, just that one. Yeah, because he was really, really, really worried about that sheep. And so that's kind of what we have to think about when we think about the story as a parable. And that means it's a, it's a story about something else that tells us about God's love. Okay? And when this is a story, because it means that God knows everybody. He knows who you are. He knows what you like and what you don't like. In the Bible, it says he knows how many hairs are on everyone's head. So he knows everything about you. And it doesn't matter how long you've been gone or why you left or what's going on in your life. He's just happy when he finds you again, right? He doesn't get mad that maybe you didn't come to church a whole lot or didn't go to Sunday school. Or he doesn't get mad that maybe you were mean to your brother or your sister or that you didn't listen to your mom. 
right? He's just so happy to have you back and to have you listening to him and following his word and learning all about him, okay? So that doesn't mean you should get lost at Dollar General, okay? Don't do that. But what that means is no matter how far you might stray away from God's love, he's always ready and willing to welcome you back into his family. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the unconditional and everlasting love that you have for every single one of us here today. Thank you for reminding us that we are important and we are valuable and we are our own person with just as much worth as anyone else in your eyes. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance." Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she's found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Here ends the reading of the word. May God bless its reading and our hearing it. If you're comfortably able to stand, I invite you to do so as we sing together. There's within my heart a melody. That's not the right hymn. It's God. I crossed. See, we sang different hymns at 815. I crossed the wrong one out. Boy, I bet, Melissa, I bet you had a heart attack just then, didn't you? <laughs> God of grace and God of glory. Let's just all sing a different hymn. <laughs> Isn't
Is it really? Okay. Sorry, Melissa. Please be seated. Well, we've heard these two parables before, haven't we? The lost sheep and the lost coin, right? And we can relate because we've lost things, haven't we? And especially, I mean, I've never owned sheep. I've had lost dogs, but that's different than sheep. But losing stuff at home, I mean, you can, you can imagine lighting a lamp and sweeping, sweeping the corners, right? Looking, lifting under the, looking under the couch cushions, emptying that junk drawer in the kitchen. Maybe it fell in there, you know. And what do you do when you find it? What's that? Celebrate. Absolutely. Unless you've misplaced, like, the vacuum cleaner. Because then when you find it, you got a vacuum, right? But most of the time, when you find what you're looking for, we rejoice. Well, these two stories were told by Jesus in response to the religious leaders who were crabby. 
They were irritated. They were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Their grumbling was provoked by Jesus' radical hospitality because Jesus was eating with those people. You know what I mean? You ever experienced that? Maybe you are one of those people. Or maybe we have looked down our noses because someone else was one of those people. Jesus sharing a table offended the delicate sensibilities of the religious leaders because the religious leaders felt like they knew the rules, they knew the boundaries, and they were the ones to enforce the holiness code of who was clean and who was unclean and who was worthy enough to be eaten with. Now, these stories can be comforting to those who feel lost at the time that they hear them. But Jesus tells these to get across to the listeners that they have really already been found. They're already part of the flock, those lost people. That it's the others who need to come to repentance. Now, the beginning, <clears throat> they've, the religious leaders, they feel threatened as others come near Jesus because they feel like their power is being diminished. They feel like they might be losing their spot. Their safety is threatened like when you come to church and somebody else is sitting in your spot. You know what I mean? Do you, do you know what I mean? All right, just making sure. But Jesus reminds us that those who are sought were already part of the flock. That the issue is those who felt like that part of the flock didn't belong. Jesus is like, don't feel threatened just because I have a meal with them. That doesn't mean I love you any less. That doesn't mean you have lost your place in society. It just means there's enough love of God to go around. God's love is abundant. It's eternal. It's, it's beyond measure. It's beyond comprehension. It's not like a pie that if somebody gets more, then we get less. That's not the way that it works. And that's the point Jesus is trying to get across to the religious leaders and anybody else who was listening that day. Now, the issue also in this story is the difference between welcoming and saving. Now, the, the shepherd goes out and saves the one sheep, right? But I think more than just saving us, God welcomes us. Because there's a difference there. Saving is about power, but welcome is about love. It's about belonging. It's about that hospitality. Saving is more about an individual, and welcome is more about an entire community. Because when that one is saved, the community is put back together again. As we talked about when we lose things, we try to find them. And in these passages, there's diligent searching going on. And of course, there's joyfulness, rejoicing when the lost item is found. And we know what it means to go the extra mile, to sweep out the corners. You know, like I said, move the refrigerator, dust out behind there. That's kind of a nasty place to dust out, isn't it? You get the, the uh, air compressor and you just blow it out, right? Yeah? Anybody? I do that every week. I don't even own an air compressor. Anyway, but we know what that feels like. But Jesus is trying to get across that the real repentance that's going on here is for those who are not rejoicing when the lost has been found. It's all about a change of heart. And beyond that, Jesus wants us, Jesus expects us to rejoice enthusiastically and joyfully, not grudgingly. Well, I guess I'm glad that they're found, but they better not be sitting in my seat, you know? No. Thank goodness they are back. Thank goodness they've returned to the community of faith. Thank goodness they have found their place again within God's flock. And Jesus expects that kind of joy when everybody is included. So, toward the end of the passage this morning, Jesus says, Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. 
I would suggest to you this morning that the sinner who repents in these parables is not the one who was lost, but rather those whose hearts and minds were changed to rejoice that the lost has been found, instead of feeling threatened that they have lost something because someone might have taken their place. Jesus calls us to rejoice. Jesus calls us to celebrate when the community is complete. And I would suggest that perhaps for all of us, there is a little bit of a changing of our minds that needs to happen, a changing in our hearts. We need to sweep out the corners, but we also need to sweep out those corners of our inner selves to remember that everybody's not here. That doesn't necessarily make them a bad person, but when they come back, let us rejoice instead of worrying what we might be losing because they're in our spot. As we prepare to pray this morning, I invite you to sing together. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are our refuge in the troubles of the world, and you look upon us from heaven and you deliver your people. You are the God whose abundance is beyond all knowing. Your grace is sufficient for every need, and we are never left destitute. Still, we look at our lives from a perspective of want. We worry about what we have and fear that others may seek to take it from us. How easily we forget that we too were lost and you came to find us. Blot out our transgressions of judging others. Wipe away our sin of condemnation. Give us a sense of joy and thankfulness for what we have in place of worry about what others may receive. Fill us with your spirit that we may seek out the lost and bring them to a saving knowledge of your Son. Loving God, your love extends to all who are knocked down by the hot winds of affliction. And in this place today, we lift up Donna Best and her family, Bob Grosser, the people of the Ukraine, the people of the United Kingdom, all those whose lives were touched 21 years ago this day. We remember those whose lives continue to be affected by wildfires and natural disasters. We also lift up to you others who remain named only in our hearts. Fill them and all who suffer with rejoicing, for you have transformed us, O oh God. Form us anew to accept your will as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
invite you to turn to page number 15 in the hymnal or turn your attention to the screen as we join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to, to give thanks to you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This is the body of Christ broken for you and for me. And the blood of Christ shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. As always, the United Methodist Church has an open communion table. This means you don't have to be a Methodist or a member of this congregation. We are in no position to tell anybody that they're unworthy to receive these gifts or unwelcome at Christ's table. We'll have two stations up here at the front. You're invited to come forward by the center aisle with your hands open to receive the body of Christ. You're invited to eat the bread. You'll be given a cup. There are baskets available to put the empty cups in. If you would like to stay in prayer at the communion rail, you're welcome to do so. 
If those who are helping to serve would come forward at this time, Christ invites us to the table.
as a shepherd searches for a lost sheep, as a woman searches for a lost coin, God seeks us out to save us. So with gratitude and joy, we offer back to God our gifts and our lives. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy, Holy One, one. Receive, receive these offerings as you receive our lives. Gather our false starts and uncertain efforts, our generosity and our reluctance. Enliven us with your breath and make your purposes known that our lives might show forth your glory. For we pray in the name of Jesus by the power of your spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. As we go over to the Fellowship Hall for lunch, we're going to ask you to go outside and around, so that way when you're in line, you can take a look at all of the displays and sign up for eight or ten different ministries in our community of faith. As we go forth from this place, be mindful that there are those who are lost, and we are to welcome them back with joy, because we too once were lost, but we have been found. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. 